Did you hear the echo in there? Whoa! Oh. Oh. Okay, we know it's <laughs> we know it's uh, it frequency works. now. Okay, FAQs. Well, we've been posting videos and pictures of our awesome new pontoon project, and there are some questions that we are here to answer, as long as they were cool questions. So, so a lot of people have asked whether we are building a whole new dredge or just making some changes to the existing dredge. And it's definitely the latter. We, are, we aren't changing anything about our current dredge platform. We're just taking our old pontoons, nixing them, setting them off to, to lay to rest. And we're building these amazing new pontoons. And we're gonna slap them under the current existing mining platform. We're gonna get the exact same length plus one foot. So that's <laughs> so where it is. All, four yeah. two feet. And the cool thing about the way the Aroka is built is that all of the the six foot flotation pontoons are bolted onto the, the, the superstructure of the frame, which right. is all. So we're gonna unbolt the old ones and bolt on the new ones in the same spot. It actually makes it really easy to do this upgrade. Um, it's kinda like putting new tires on your uh, on your truck. Yeah, right now our, our dredge truck has extremely old, bald tires that have multiple leaks. Yeah. And um, the leaks are causing us to go really slow. Right. And then they're also <laughs> the like on some mismatched Subaru rims with like redrilled holes, like a four pattern, but they've turned it to a five or something. Yeah. And, and one of them's a spare tire, like the little donut that's like in the <laughs> trunk of the car. It is more than double the flotation, which means we can put more, that we can double the amount of stuff we put on and it'll be fine. So some people are asking about like why aluminum for boats right. in general? Well, the alternatives are fiberglass, wood and steel or inflatable. <laughs> There's some guys that have inflatable <laughs> stuff on their dredges. That's there um, are some guys that do. We are going with aluminum because it's uh, it's fast and versatile to to cut and weld. It doesn't rust like steel, um, and fiberglass impressive. requires a, a, a basically a huge mold that you'd have to like lay in this fiberglass. And it's a it's a these are custom built. So for aluminum, it's great for us. No rust, uh, corrosion resistant, and it's um, we can do it. With, uh, we can always add on to it. You can always weld more things onto it, and yeah. so and you don't have to paint it or anything. Yeah, Maybe. and it's uh, it's light. Do you think it's like a, a specifically Alaska that likes aluminum, or is it just? It seems so because people yeah. in Florida don't use aluminum boats, but Alaskans use aluminum all the time. I think it's our mm -hmm. our fishing industry. Uh, people like the um, like the toughness of the aluminum boats and like all the commercial boats you see out there that are. Um, pilot boats and uh, even tenders and all this stuff. Aluminum is so common up here. And actually this, these ones are built to handle the Bering Sea. That's why we got all this framing in there. Uh, so they can handle all the weather, the big yeah, waves. I mean, the metal we chose for this is 3 16 uh, And it's, 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 a, it's a certain alloy, which is specific for uh, marine, marine use. And this is really common for a lot of hulls. We see hulls made of eighth inch, and three sixteenths is, is a lot more than that. Even though it's a tiny measurement, it has a whole lot more strength. If you go too thin, it's like tin foil, and if you go too thick, it's just really expensive. So we don't, yeah. we're not doing quarter inch. That adds a lot of uh, cost, and it's just unneeded cost. Right, for unnecessary for for this application too. Yeah, I mean, right. the current pontoons are one eighth or less. I think probably. they're eight. In fact, we talked to the guy who was involved in the build, and he's like, oh, I think. I think we made them really thick, like eighth, because we didn't want to go thinner than that. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, man. We're, so we're going a, a big step ahead. And the framing is quarter inch for all, all in there, and then the external is three sixteenths. We're, I think we are well within the the parameters for what we're doing. I mean, this thing is just beefy, and yeah. this thing looks yeah. so tough. I mean, you want a real boat, you want a real hull. Um, you know, the boat's catamaran style, so obviously this is going to be catamaran as well, which is a great. Um, design for uh, stability and seaworthiness. I mean, we want something we can go to 14 with, but we also want something with future possibilities with, you know, claims that are not close to the harbor or that are maybe 50 miles away. We want something that is actually a boat and is actually seaworthy. So some people are asking, why don't we fill them with foam? And I, as far as I know, and, and you could definitely like, t like comment on this, like uh, filling a pontoon with foam is like the death of the pontoon. Yeah. 
there's there's some reasons not to do it. One reason is that the spray-in foam can hold water. So if it does get wet, it will hold water for a long time. And when it holds water against the aluminum, that aluminum will begin to corrode over a long period of time. And so 10 years down the road, your, your, your not a road really, 10 years down the ocean, your boat has <laughs> now got all these little holes in it, a little, little pitting, little, and it gets, starts getting weaker. Uh, also, filling it with foam is insurance. It keeps you from sinking. We're gonna do the insurance the other way and just make it welded strong so that you can hit things and not crack. So we don't need foam. That's what it is. Right, we right. Also, foam. I mean, we have separate compartments, separate voids. Even right. if one pontoon were to be compromised, we wouldn't sink because right. theoretically all the other pontoons are intact. Yeah, exactly. So how people are have... asking, how do we test the pontoons to make sure they're not going to sink before we put it in the water? And the answer is, you don't. You just put it in the water and yeah. hope for the best. The answer is, uh, trust me. Yeah. It'll work. <laughs> yeah. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> well, okay, when we do weld the seams, when we weld them all together, this weld right here, the next pontoon will, will butt into this. Mm -hmm. When we weld that, I can visually inspect the weld and see that it has no holes. Yeah. That's how we know it's not going to sink. A visual inspection of the welds. That's it. Right. I mean, and, and I kid, you know, I say we'll, we'll find out, but I mean, Dan's an expert boat builder and he knows what he's doing when it comes to welding. I mean, you know, that's that's how you know, is because somebody who's trained to inspect welds for leaks and, and compromises um, is able to inspect the welds and be like, this is gonna hold against a lot of seawater. Also, Dan's got a, he's got a job on the, the Eroica. He's gotta make some gold. <laughs> so it's in his best interest that the boat doesn't sink. Don't leave my life jacket on shore when we go out. Yeah. Like, just to make sure. <laughs> People have had some comments about our, our framing and, and, and how we're doing it. So let me show you what we have. We've got, this is the bulkhead. This is the strongest part of the whole deal, and it's 100% welded out to the hull. And that this piece keeps the hull in the right shape. And anything we hit, it, 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 this takes takes the load. The Eroica will be bolted on right here. So this is all of the structure. This is assisting with making this strong. There's going to be another piece like this right here, and also over there. So this is going to get more welding to make it stronger. These are the main frames, which are parallel with the keel, so that if you hit a rock while going forward, the rock would hit on the other side of this and, and it would lift the boat up rather than puncture. This is what we're calling a ring frame. It's three feet from here, and that is doing two things. One, it's adding additional support to the, to the hull, but the other thing is that it's supporting these flat bars, keeping them from twisting side to side. If the flat bars remain vertical, then they're very strong. If they, if they flex, you got problems. And then up here, there'll be another bulkhead just like that that welds here, and that'll get welded. And so that this bulkhead will provide structure to this seam here so that our, our welded seam doesn't crack. So every three feet, we've got structure this way, and then we're crossing it with our, our, uh, our, our, long, our long frames here. That's the gist of it. So stay tuned. We're gonna make videos about every part of this build. Um, this is just the beginning of what it's gonna be an amazing project. I mean, we're, we're doing brand new pontoons for the boat. You know, we're starting in Homer, we're shipping everything to Gnome. And then once we get to Gnome, it's gonna be a mad dash to get these welded up, get them stra slapped together and tear out the old pontoons in with the new. This is our magnum opus. This is the biggest project we have ever done on the Eroica and also the most expensive. So we're gonna be covering every aspect of this process. Um, just wanna give a shout out to Lincoln Electric, who is helping us with this project. They're providing a lot of the equipment, including uh, an amazing brand new welder. We have an amazing team on it. You know, we have our, our diver, Dan. We have diver, Alex, who's doing the filming. He's also helping on this project. You have um, yours truly standing here in this very, icy cold Alaskan winter telling you about this project. <laughs> you have my brother Paul who's helping with a lot of the fitting and like the general nuts and bolts. You know you're gonna see this unfold and I'm, I'm just like, so excited to share with you. If you're as excited about this project as we are and you want to help us out go to BeringSeaPayDirt.com and buy some of our gold or some of our pay dirt and uh, it's pretty much like you're working on the pontoons with us except for panning some dirt in the comfort of your living room. Um, this this gold that we're selling on BearingZooPater.com was all mined on the Eroica, quite possibly sucked up by Dan or Alex last year. It's still salty. It's straight out of the Bering Sea. Yeah. <laughs>
no, it's only salty because Dan shed tears of joy on it. Tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the gold that's funding this project, so. 100%. Stay with us, stay tuned, and we're so excited to share this project with you.